What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hacks. My name is Travis. Today we're gonna do the highly requested video and that is what is the lighting setup on the 300 gallon reef. Now I just finished it last week so this is a perfect time to go over and show you guys what I have going on. And uh, there's a lot of questions that you guys have had over the last six months on the lighting. So hopefully I can answer all of those here in this video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and break this video up into a few different categories. The first one's going to be equipment. This is where we talk about the retrofit kit, why I went that direction, the perks of having that kit. Also talk about the LEDs, how many I have, and why, again, I went that direction. Then we're going to move over to the Apex side of things where we uh, set up the WXM, talk about the programming with the uh, intensity, spectrum, my lighting schedule. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and end the video with the PAR readings on the entire tank and my thoughts on the lighting so far. So let's go ahead and get started. So when it comes to retrofit kits, I decided to go with the Aquatic Life 48 inch hybrid T5 high output fixture. Now this is going to have the four uh, 54 watt um, T5 bulbs and it gives you uh, the ability to put LEDs like uh, Ecotech Radions, Kessels, Aqua Illumination Series, all that kind of stuff within the middle section of this fixture. Now I ordered it when it first came out. I talked about it briefly when we were setting up the canopy on the 300 gallon, uh, but this will be my more in-depth uh, look at the uh, setup. Now I went ahead and I ordered these fixtures and I built the entire canopy around them. I can easily remove them if I need to, but they literally just sit inside the canopy on the little ledges that I made there and then allows me to uh, run all the cores through the back of the canopy and connect down to the apex. Now I did go ahead and actually connect up uh, four 200 millimeter fans to the back wall of the canopy, which allows uh, the heat to be pulled out once the T5s kick on. So what I did is I just connected both of those T5 fixtures to a power strip on the back of the canopy, then connected all four of those fans to a 12 volt DC uh, left like adapter or whatever was left over from a JBO pump. And then when the T5s kick on, all four of those fans will kick on as well. And then that will pull all the hot air out of the canopy. I don't have to worry about anything overheating or the tank getting hot based off all the lighting that's going on in that canopy. Now, just a quick note on the fans. If you do decide to go that direction, definitely spend the money and get the higher end ones like the Cool Master and stuff like that. Uh, originally, when I set up this canopy, I went the cheaper route and got like the $9, $10 fans off of Amazon. And they just died like, what, two weeks ago? And I just replaced them with the Cool Master. So I lost about $50 or $60 because I went the cheaper route earlier on instead of just going ahead and spending the $80 and getting the better ones, uh, which will, of course, last longer and move more air. Now I do currently run two of these light fixtures over the 300 gallon and uh, that allows me to have eight T5 bulbs over the system. Now I currently run four blue plus and four actinic bulbs and I'm going to be changing those guys out here in the next uh, two or three months giving us around that eight or nine month mark where I like to actually change out my T5s. I am considering going over to a darker type, uh, maybe from a Giesman of a Blue Plus. I just don't really like how bright the blue is uh, with the current Blue Plus on the tank there. Uh, it's just kind of one of those things. I like the darker uh, type of blue that you get from the LEDs, but I also like having the T5s to fill in the shading and get the additional par on the tank. So I'm kind of just going to fit around with my next set of bulbs to see exactly what spectrum and coloration I want to go with. All right, so let's go to move on to the LEDs and what did I decide to go with for this setup? Now, as you guys can see here, I have two Radeon XR15 Gen 4 Pros that I'm opening up. Now, these are the last two of eight that are over this system. So we're currently eight XR15 Gen 4 Pros, and a lot of you guys have been asking me, why didn't I just go with the uh, XR30s? Now, there are a couple different reasons for that. Uh, the first one is I wanna be able to move the uh, smaller XR15 around within that retrofit kit to be able to add par in certain areas of the tank. So the way my rock structures are, it doesn't necessarily line up of where those XR15s or better yet, the XR30s would necessarily be. So uh, with the smaller light fixture, I'm able to slide it throughout uh, uh, the retrofit kit to add certain par and intensities on uh, different parts of the rock structure where there are acropores or certain coral that I feel needs a little bit more or less par. Now the second reason for that is I want to be able to manipulate the shading within the tank. Now there are cross beams on this 300 gallon as well as on the canopy there and I want to be able to slide the uh, XR15s around in a way that it doesn't cause excess shading within the tank. Now the T5s definitely help with the shading and after getting all these LEDs over the tank, uh, the T5s are just really a bonus at this point. The LEDs alone would be more than enough to suffice for all the growth that will ever happen in this tank or any par that would ever be required. But uh, you guys will see later on with the par numbers that the uh, T5s are a great addition, not only to the shading aspect to remove it from the tank, but to also add that uh, 15 to 20 more par uh, to those uh, corals within the tank. 
Now when it comes to adding the XR15s to the retrofit kit, it's pretty simple. You're just going to go ahead and connect the provided brackets that come with the lighting fixture. Now I believe it only comes with two or three sets of brackets, so if you're going to be adding multiple XR15s or other lights, you're going to have to pick up uh, more brackets from BulkReefSupply.com or I believe AquaticLife.com as well. You can get them there. Um, but either way, I will try to find a link from Bulk Reef Supply and put it in the description below. Now it's pretty simple when it comes to connecting these, just use the provided screws within uh, the XR15 box there and then connect the brackets. It's that simple. Uh, once it's in place, you can finally tighten them down all the way so nothing wiggles around and they simply fit right into the grooves built into the fixture. It's very simple and again, it's great for sliding the lights around, manipulating that par intensity as well as the shading within the tank. All right, now that I've gone over all the equipment for the lighting, let's go to move into the Apex and the setup within the WXM. Now, you guys can connect your Radions with the uh, Reef Link, but in this video, I'm specifically going to talk about the WXM module. Now, the first thing you're going to do when you connect that module is go ahead and update it. Now, I am using the classic Apex, not the new one, so everything I talk about is going to evolve around that. So, to update my WXM, I have to come in here to the classic dashboard, which you can access through your uh, IP address and your port number with your default uh, password and all that kind of stuff. Then you're going to come in here to the configuration tab, come to modules, and then down to your w WXM. At that point, you're going to go ahead and click update and then give it three to five minutes to update the module. Do not attempt to add anything or do anything to that module for at least three to five minutes. Now, the reason why I say that is in the past, I have attempted to do an update and did not wait long enough for it to update before trying to attach a piece of equipment, causing that update to fail and turn, uh, making me uh, call uh, Neptune and be on their uh, telephone support for multiple hours while they uh, went in and reset my module. It's just not worth it. So just hit the update button and wait three to five minutes before attaching any piece of equipment. All right, once your WXM is updated, just go ahead and plug in all your Radeon lights that you want to attach at that time. Hit the Attach Radeon button here in the Classic Dashboard. At that point, your Radeons will turn off and then turn back on. And then go over here to your NeptuneFusion.com uh, dashboard, and you should see a thing that says New Tiles. At that point, just go ahead and open that up and drag your Radeon lights down into the dashboard. Now, one thing that you will notice is it will say uh, missing for a couple minutes. Uh, basically, what it's doing is it's updating the light fixture because if you go into that missing tab, you're only going to see uh, six uh, light adjustments when you should have eight uh, for the XR15. So basically, just give it uh, three to ten minutes. It depends on your network connection and kind of what's going on with your Apex. But uh, usually within ten minutes, all the light fixtures have been updated from the six bars uh, adjustments to the eight, which then you can go through and then set up your lighting schedule. All right, now that the Radeon is updated, let me show you how I set up my profile. Basically, because I have profiles already existing from other Radeons, it's pretty simple to copy it over. You'll come over here and hit Copy, and then you can select whatever Radeon you want to copy your profile from, and then that will come down here. Now, my setup is very simple. It's a simple ramping up in the morning, being at the same intensity all day, no special effects or anything like that, no storms or lightning. And then it's just going to ramp back down at night. As you guys can see, I start ramping at 8 a.m. It's at the full intensity by 9 a.m. And then that's straight through the day until 9 p.m. And then it ramps down to be off at 10 p.m. Now, when it comes down to my uh, spectrum and what I have going on here, I have it as close to the AB spectrum as I can. As you guys can see, at 9 a.m., I'm going to be doing the 15% uh, green and red. I'll be moving over to 100% uh, blue, royal blue, and UV. Now my uh, cool white and white are going to be at 25%, and then my violet's going to be at 100 Now that's going to be the same thing throughout the entire day, and then of course it will ramp down uh, to zero at uh, 8 p.m. Or sorry, 10 p.m. Now, uh, the reason why I want this route is because I want to keep it as simple as possible. I'm not looking to do any kind of special ramping or fluctuations throughout the day. I just want the maximum amount of par that I can get on my uh, tank and, uh, and within, a, of course, a appropriate range. And then allow those corals to soak up all the light that they can through the uh, longest photo period that I feel comfortable with in turn encouraging growth. Now, I'll tell you right now, uh, I do have a long lighting schedule, but I have great growth within my tank. And this is not something that you're just going to want to jump into right away. This is something I've been doing for a, quite a while. So the corals that I have are actually used to having that extended light. And when you guys see the par, you'll see that between the par and how long it's actually on for, this is a great environment and encourages a lot of growth with the Acropora. Now, one thing I do want to mention here, just in case you didn't pick up on it, is all eight Radions are at 100% once they get to the full ramping at 9 a.m. So it's 100% on all channels that I dictate here down in the AB spectrum. 
but again that's eight xr15s at 100 percent over uh, this uh, tank now the par numbers are really good on this setup i i have uh, been very surprised on the sheer amount of power of just a single xr15 on a 30 inch tall tank and I'll tell you right now, uh, with them kind of uh, crossing each other within the tank, you know, between the different uh, spreads of the light, um, it's just amazing on what you can get with just a small light. So uh, as I mentioned before, and I'll just say it again, you really do get what you pay for. I know in the beginning I was using the uh, the ship boxes, the black boxes, the SB reef lights, the Mars aquas. And yes, those did grow coral. They did have a decent spread and they worked, but it does not compare to uh, the XR-15s or even a Kessel or the AP-700s, which we'll talk about on the frag tank in a later video. But I'll tell you right now, you really do get what you pay for. So if you're going to, uh, if you're serious about growing acros or you're serious about investing into the hobby, uh, just go ahead and spend the money on the uh, XR-15s, XR-30s, or even the Kessels. All right, now that we're talking about par readings, let's go ahead and talk about how I went about getting these uh, readings and then break it down to individual rock structures with uh, LEDs and then the LED T5 combo. Now, if you guys have been here for a while, you know that I use the Senai Reef hooked up to my laptop here to get these readings. It is attached to a old algae glass scraper that I used on the 125, and uh, I find it to be pretty good and pretty accurate. It's definitely cheaper than the higher end ones. Then again, you do get what you pay for, so these numbers are going to be, uh, give or take, probably uh, 20 to 50 par, uh, depending on uh, kind of what angle you're holding the device at. Now, uh, let's go ahead and break it down to each individual rock structure, and I'll kind of tell you uh, what I get for par. All right, so the first thing I wanted to see is what kind of par I'm getting with just the XR-15s. Now, this rock structure has been rolling with just one XR-15 for the entire six months. As you can see, Acropora is growing without any issues. Now that I've added the second one, I went ahead and did the par readings, and you can see that I'm getting about 260 at the top there. And then you can see where I've adjusted where the XR-15s are and why I'm getting higher par numbers, maybe to the right there, opposed to the very top of the uh, rock structure. Now moving over to the XR15 and T5 combo, as you can see there's like a 50 par difference or increase with the T5s being on there. Now that does fluctuate throughout the entire tank, so the average is about 20 to 50 par increase with the T5s on the XR15s. And uh, I am within a range that I like to have on my entire system. I like to keep it between 250 and 500 between all the rock structures. Now I am making an exception for uh, the uh, middle right rock structure where I have a, a 570 par which you guys will see here in a second so right now i'm staying between uh, 250 and 600 throughout the entire tank now i am going to show you the individual rock structures with the t5 combo as well as the xr15s alone and you guys can see that the par numbers are absolutely perfect for sps growth throughout the entire tank and I will be honest with you, I was surprised on how good the lighting turned out with those XR15s and the sheer amount of power that they have. The fact that I'm within uh, SPS growing par ranges or numbers on a 30 inch tall tank with such a small LED and, uh, and it's throughout the entire system. I can grow Acropora anywhere in this tank on any part of the rock structures given there's no shading or there's not another coral blocking it. But uh, right now I'm really happy with the setup and the lighting. Uh, given that this is my dream build, I'm happy that it's finally all come together and uh, things are working out. Now, I do plan on adding a lot more Acropora to this tank as well as other SPS, tr just trying to fill in some of the spots. But then again, you got to take into consideration how the coral is going to grow. I'm already fragging Acros now to prevent them from touching each other. So that's just something that I'm going to have to take into consideration when adding new coral. Now, I do want to say that the coloration in these Acropora are much better than what I've had in the past with other types of LEDs. Now, I definitely feel that the radions are giving a better spectrum for that. But another thing that I'm doing is I'm dosing totally different from previous tanks. And now, I will do a, a separate video breaking down everything that I'm dosing uh, regarding the calcium reactor, supplements, Acropower, fuel, uh, potassium, all that kind of stuff. I'll break it down into a separate video uh, talking about how much I'm doing, how often, and all that good stuff so you guys understand where I'm coming from. So between how good the LEDs are with the T5 combination, how the dosing is uh, taking place, and what's going on with this tank, uh, the growth is really, really good. It's very quickly uh, taking off and just turning into an amazing tank. So uh, stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of updates on this system. We have a lot of uh, DIY projects and things going on for this tank as well as uh, you know other things here within the fish room so if you have any questions about my setup please let me know if not i'll see you guys in a later video peace